In this uh, video I'm going to take a look at how you crease a piece of material. Um, a crease is distinct from a flute, at least in my opinion, um, in their, their shape. A flute, if that's your piece of material there, uh, what tends to happen with a flute is that you knock up a shape into it like that, uh, which can be seen from the front. Um, they, they, they vary in shape and size and, 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 and look and so on, but that's pretty much what they are. You're denting the material. Um, we often dent them a bit too far these days with our flutes, I think. But anyway, we're not going to look at flutes. What we're going to look at is a crease. So if you imagine there's a piece of material that goes like that, and then it returns back around. And just in that space there is where we would put our crease. You see these typically down the front of the creases, polynes cooters and so on, um, even spolders, uh, bassinets, pretty much anywhere you can see a straight line like this uh, that's not a flute. So I'm going to take a look at it, put these in, it's quite straightforward, there's a couple of different ways um, and a few others that I won't cover in this to be fair because I, I just don't do those uh, type or have the tooling for them. Um, but uh, let's take a quick look at how you can uh, make a crease. So just to show again what a crease is, I've got this old uh, greave out of the scrap bin. I um, can't remember why I wasn't happy with it, but I wasn't at the time. But you can see here where the crease catches the light on that groove. And what it does is it gives a nice aesthetic, a nice control to the light. Adds an extra bit of strength to this piece of material, because otherwise it'd just be shaped. Uh, with this down there, it's a bit like the lines on the bonnet of a car. It adds a good degree of strength to this piece of material. Now which, why they, they did this, uh, what the genesis of this was, uh, whether it was aesthetic and then they discovered they have made it stronger or whether it was to make something stronger and discovered that they liked the look of it, I have absolutely no idea. Um, but they're relatively straightforward to put in um, and add a good bit of strength to an otherwise um, potentially weak piece of material. So using the minimum of tools uh, what I'm going to take a look at here is how you can put a crease into a straight bit of uh, material like this. Uh, just a bit of scrap that I've got for a demonstration I gave to someone or something earlier. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put a crease in along here. On this one we're just going to keep it nice and straight. We don't need to draw a line for this demonstration. Um, what we're going to do is just use the edge of the anvil. Now it's important whilst I do this, what I don't want to do is go and actually use the anvil there. What I've done is I've just considerably weakened this piece of material. Just check this on frame there. I've considerably weakened that. If you do that enough, you can end up with a situation, bear me one moment, you can end up with a situation where you'll beat the material so badly, you'll actually make it pretty useless, to be fair. So what we're going to look to do is add a line down there. Now what I've done with the edge of this anvil is it's still sharp up here but I've blunted it down a bit here because I use it for turning edges. So what we're going to look to do is we've just got a small hammer, more or less any size will do, just try and make sure the edge is around and just touch it down. And the same again. Tapping it down, try not to bruise the material or put too much of a line into the back. A little bit of a touch on top. And there we've pretty much done our crease. A lot of the look and um, aesthetic, the sharpness of the crease comes a bit later uh, with the cleaning. But if you just want to tidy that up, a small hammer like this can mean you put lots of dents and bits and pieces in it. So if you go to a larger hammer, just go lightly and just touch them down. Remember the sharper you push this, the more the likelihood is that you'll put a crease in and wreck the bit of material. And then all you do from the back chase it back down. Particularly if you're doing things like greaves 
which have been really shaped and they're bent on all angles. Um, you need to push this back down from behind because otherwise what will happen is when you clean it you get all these little hammer marks along your crease and they look horrible. So just gently touching that back and there is your crease. We catch it nicely in the light there. Nice and easy. You can sharpen that up with a bit of cleaning. Um, but you get the idea. That's how you can do it over a piece like this. Now, it's not planished. Fortunately, this was something from a demonstration I was showing somebody how to curve a bit of metal uh, on the planes. But you can see there, that this anvil edge now will be no use to putting that crease in. And what you need to do is get hold of a stake of some kind. So what we've got here is a concave piece of material. And what we're going to do is drop a, uh, a crease along the front of the surface. Now, for all intents and purposes, it's the same as we did below uh, on the edge of the anvil, except now we've got a slight curve in this stake. One second. So, we've got a curve on the stake, in this case an old drill bit. What you do is you offer your piece up, Again, using the same hammer, and we're looking to crease this, not flute it. So you just touch it down gently. Again, remembering not to do that, because you just weaken the material dramatically. Let's see if we can get that on the camera there. There we go, you can see that. I can get the pliers on that again and probably snap that off. You're looking to just use this as an edge and you're hitting about here. There we go, one. Same again on the other side. And two. And we can see we've knocked in the beginnings of our crease. Remember, it's just to catch the light and to offer up a bit of strength without murdering the back. So again, as before, we've got the back of our worked crease here, and what we're going to do, you can see if I can catch that just right on the light, looking the camera about, you can see how it's got a definite edge to it, we want to smooth that back. So, working the inside with a reasonable flat butt, uh, without any sharp edges hammer, just touch that back. Walk it back out into the material. And there again. Let's see if we can catch the light on that. We've got a reasonable crease in there. And you can see there when you finished working the inside of the piece how the light starts to catch on it nicely and if we were to clean that back we'd have a reasonable little crease in there. A lot of the work on these creases is in the cleaning to be completely fair to them. Uh, you get them nice and sharp as you can from the hammer uh, and then you just touch it back and you're done. If you're doing armour that's blackened from the forge uh, or you're leaving it rough from the forge even better still because then there's no removal of surface material just take your time with the hammers and go a bit steadier uh, than I have done uh, for the speed of this video but you can see there what that's like. And what I'll do is I'll just give that a quick touch with a 120 grip so we can see the difference that a little bit of cleaning makes. So here we are, uh, just clean back to, um, I think it's about a 120 grit there, uh, real quick. But you can see how it's starting to catch the light, add a bit of detail and aesthetic to our piece. But also importantly, a little bit of strength um, across there. So that's how you add a crease. Uh, depending on the size of the curve, would depend on the type of stake that you want to use. Um, and this is why you end up 
if you go and see an armourer, they tend to have just a whole plethora of uh, different stakes, uh, depending on what it is you're trying to achieve, uh, in what shape. I've got a weird one somewhere which I can't seem to find at the moment. I've got a, uh, a concave um, stake that I use sometimes to get inside of stuff, which I can't seem to find at the moment. Be typical, the next job I do will need it and I've lost it. But there you go, you can see how putting a crease into a piece of material is reasonably straightforward. It does take time to teach your eye uh, to, to follow the lines when you're past things on these stakes. Um, you just stick with it, it's really not that difficult. I was advised very early on to learn how to do things over stakes as opposed to using wheels. Whilst the wheel can be quicker, a sort of rotary chisel that you put things through, it can get difficult if you've got to do strange shapes. Um, certainly if you've learned to use uh, hammers and so on, and a, a rotary chisel can be useful. But if you rely on things like the rotary chisel, you can sometimes come unstuck when you've got a peculiar shape that you've got to follow, which you can more readily with a hammer uh, and a stake. So. Like I say, there we go, adding stake, uh, adding creases, quite straightforward. What I'll do is I'll do a follow-up to this uh, shortly on um, flutes and step flutes and bits and pieces. But just to get us going, a nice easy video on um, how to make a simple crease in a piece of material. Thanks for watching.